Are you playing Elden Ring and find yourself practically swimming in the later level smithing stones, but missing the lower level ones that you actually need to level up your weapon? Well, I mean, I hate to be an asshole, but that kind of sounds like a you problem, and maybe you should stick to the proper path instead of sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. I'm kidding! This is a common issue in Elden Ring, and fortunately, it's one that can be easily solved, if you know where to look. So, here's how to reliably find or buy smithing and somber smithing stones in Elden Ring. Region spoilers ahead. First off, a quick note, whenever you take a look at your map and see these red circles, that means there's a crystal cave around there, and you should always make it a priority to explore them when you're looking for upgrade stones. Scrounge around corners and always keep an eye out for brown or white crystals, as smithing and somber smithing stones can also appear as materials that spawn in these sorts of caves. You'll also want a weapon that does either piercing or bludgeoning damage to deal with those rocky enemies and bosses, as they are very resistant to slashing damage. The stones that you find in caves and on bodies are all one-time pickups though, so what you no doubt want is a place where you can just buy them whenever you need them. For that, you're going to want to find a bell bearing or two. For regular smithing stones, there are four of these, and by far the easiest to find lies in the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel deep in the Leornia region. Fight through the caves and defeat the Crystallian boss to get the first smithing bell bearing. Bring it back to the Twin Maiden Husk Merchant in the Round Table Hold, and you'll be able to buy as many level 1 and level 2 stones as you want. To be able to buy level 3 and 4 stones, you'll need to get a good deal further into the game, as it's located in the Altus region. Head to the sealed tunnel marked right here, which is full of illusory walls that you'll need to smack in order to reveal the pathway, and then at about halfway in, you'll find the next smithing bell bearing in a chest. The next two bell bearings are both towards the end of the game. Number three is found in the Zamor ruins shortly after reaching the mountaintops of the giants. Just keep searching the ruins once you clear it out to find this staircase leading underground to find it. And number four is found after beating the Godskin Duo boss battle, which is on the mainline path once you reach Crumbling Far Mazula. With all those, you should be able to buy as many smithing stones from level one to eight as you need. As for somber smithing stones, those are a little tougher to come by. The first one is a reward for being the extremely tough Falling Star Beast in the Celia Crystal Tunnel, which you've probably already been to if you accidentally opened this chest in the Dragonburnt Ruins back at the beginning of the game. The second one can be found by heading over to the Altus Tunnels shown here, and then beating the two Crystallian bosses awaiting you at the end. The third one resides in the mountaintops of the Giants region, at the First Church of Marika, all the way in the northeastern part of the map. And the final two are hard to miss, as they're directly in your path in the final region of the game, Crumbling Farum Azula. Ignore the fact that you can't see them, I already picked them up, just trust me, they're there. If you did miss this last one, the fastest way to get to it would be to go to the Beside the Great Bridge Grace, take the elevator behind you back down, and work your way back to this altar from there. Now you should be able to bring any weapon up to a viable state for wherever you're at in your playthrough as long as you have the runes to fund the project, of course. The ancient dragon smithing stones that you'll need to upgrade a weapon to its max level cannot be purchased, only found in limited quantities near the very end of the game. A few even in secret regions that require following certain quest lines and finding two halves of a very specific medallion. That's for another video though. The point is, you'll really need to think about which weapons you want to hold onto as your main weapons going into the post game of Elden Ring, because there are only so many of these to go around. And that's it! For more Elden Ring help, make sure to check out our video on things to do first, and things Elden Ring doesn't tell you. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.